Okay, so here we are to solve a problem. Uh, in this case, we want to calculate the neutral current on an unbalanced Y connected load uh, with the following values. So our source is a 120, 208 volt source, 60 Hertz, three phase, four wire, pretty standard Y source. Phase A is a coil, eight ohms of resistance, power factor of 0.8. Phase B is 20 ohm resistor, and phase C is a capacitor with a capacitive reactance of 12 ohms. So what I've got down in the bottom left is we've already got a, a phasor diagram. So here I've got my phase voltages and my line voltages already plotted out. That's from my source. All right, so I got VAN as my reference at zero degrees. My line voltage is leading by 30 degrees. So now what I want to do is I'm actually going to draw my source or my load and we'll kind of calculate from there. So let's do this. Let's go phase A was a coil. Phase B was a resistor. And phase C was a capacitor like that. And we'll connect that up to the source. So I got, you know, A, B, C, and we'll throw in a neutral neutral all right so where i want to start from here is with most y circuit calculations i want to calculate within each phase first so i'm going to calculate the values in each phase and then we'll talk about the neutral current after that so phase a right phase a is our coil and our coil has a resistance of 10 ohms and a power factor of 0 0.8 lag. Well, what that tells me is that is a coil that has resistance and inductive reactance, which all coils do. So phase A really has its own little impedance diagram that we can draw out. We know we have eight ohms of resistance and a power factor of 0 0.8. Um, the lag tells us that it is uh, inductive load, right? If it was a lead, it would be capacitive and it would be different. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just solve for my impedance here, right? So I get an impedance in this phase of 10 ohms. I just go 0 0.8 or, or 8 divided by 0 0.8 and that gives me 10. Now my, so now what I do is I'm going to calculate my current. My current, we know I A to N will be V A to N, right? My phase voltage divided by my phase impedance. So in this case, it's 120 volts divided by 10 ohms, which gives me 12 amps. So I calculate out 12 amps as my current that's flowing in the phase, which we also know that in a Y circuit, I phase equals I line. So it is also my line current for phase A. And my theta for that, right, my phase angle is a 36.9, but I'm just going to say 37 degree lag. Okay. Now, because we are basing it off of the voltage A to N, that would be at zero degrees. We're going to lag by 37 degrees, which puts my phaser for that current at 323 degrees. So we'll do that when we at the end, when we do our phaser diagram up really quick. Actually, I'll put it in right now. Uh, 12, 12 amps at, um, 323 degrees so that would be somewhere down here on my phaser diagram that's I A perfect now we're going to go into phase B so phase B was our resistive load so nice and simple we're going to do that same formula I B to N equals V, B to N, over Z, B to N. It's a resistor. So that's my total opposition. And we were told that was 20 ohms 
which gives us 6 amps with a phase angle of 0 degrees, right? Resistor, current, and voltage are in phase with each other. And that gives us a phasor angle, right? Again, this is based off of VB to N, which would mean that my phasor would be right there on top of VB to N, down on my phasor diagram. That would be IB, right? It would be in phase with the phase voltage. So that puts it right at 240 degrees. Lastly, we have phase C. Now phase C, we're gonna do the exact same thing here. We were told it was a capacitor with 12 ohms of capacitive reactance. So we'll go IC to N equals VC to N divided by Z, C to N. 120 volts is our phase voltage, right? We're talking about a capacitor in the phase divided by 12 ohms, gives us 10 amps. Awesome. Now our phase angle, well, a capacitor we know has a phase angle, a theta of 90 degrees, and the current would lead the voltage. And then the last piece is our phasor angle, where our phasor would end up. So in this case, basing off of the phase voltage, which is at 120 degrees, we would lead this way by 90 degrees, which would put me at 210 degrees, and I'm 10 amps, so something like that. So I C would be down there at 210 degrees. Awesome. So that's how I would calculate in each phase, right? We know my phase voltage or my phase current and my line current are the same. So I've also calculated those technically. Now what we want to talk about is the neutral, right? And when we get into the neutral, and I'm just going to move this up a little bit, we're calculating a neutral here. So when we're calculating a neutral, the process to calculate a neutral, right? A neutral is to carry the unbalanced load, right? So what we want to do is we go I of the neutral is equal to IA plus IB plus IC. Of course, adding these all up vectorally, right? That's how we add everything now. So I'm going to take those values and I'm going to add them all up. So I'm going to go literally 12 amps at 323 degrees plus 6 amps at 240 degrees plus 10 amps at 210 degrees. Now I'm going to add these up using polar rectangular format on my calculator, or I'm going to use uh, an HV chart, a horizontal vertical chart, which check out my other video on that if you're not sure. Um, but when I add those up, at the end of the day, in this case, I would end up with a neutral current of 17.5-ish amps and at about an angle of 263 degrees. Um, so yeah, that would be that rundown. I mean, it, pretty simple loads in this case, but I just wanted to discuss that whole process. Um, so the first step would be, of course, solve inside each phase, find your phase angle, and find the angle at which your phaser's at. And then the last step is just this one right here, where we add up the, all of the three line currents, and that gives us the unbalanced current on our neutral. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. I really do hope this helped. Um, have a great day.